Classmates, we must all eventually begin to control the direction of our own lives and accept the choices we've made for what they were. And we must then look forward to making better choices in the future. One day, we may be teachers, architects, captains of industry, or even, God forbid, government officials. <laughs> the choices we make in the time that stands between then and now will determine if and how we get there. It might be easy, it might be hard, but one thing is for certain. If you go slow, if you think about every subtle movement, if you grab your future with both hands and hold it tight in your embrace, wisdom and might will be thrust into you like the bulk of Zeus's lightning. The coming enlightenment will bring with it a sudden rush at the realization that if we all set aside our petty differences, if we leave all the silly drama and minor grudges behind, if we widen our perspectives and accept people and things for who and what they are and nothing else, well, we, we will be able to change the face of our world for the good of mankind. <laughs> As citizens of the world, the most important thing we have is each other. And through working together and helping those in need, we in turn will be helped when we, when we most need it. Excuse me. <laughs> it is through such ideals that our generation will push through to the brave new world that lies ahead and work to change the standards of what has become acceptable. What I'm saying is, in the future, there may come a time when you just have to look yourself in the mirror and say, when in Rome. <laughs> now the question I must ask you is, will you be an agent of change, or are you going to just sit there as the world turns around you? Are you so satisfied with the way things are going that you can take the things that bother you and simply brush them under the rug? A wise man once said, if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. So I'm asking you today, what do you stand for? What are my beliefs and passions? And are they worth fighting for? And, if you have nothing to believe in, absolutely nothing at all, believe in yourself. With a little pride and a lot of determination, you can do anything you put your mind to, and never let anyone tell you otherwise. Now that I've restated everything your grandparents told you when you were five, <laughs> let's cut to the part where I tell you parts of the speech you will actually remember and take home with you. Classmates, like the Sopranos, our time at high school is over. <laughs> We must look at this fact, not with sadness, but with hope and excited anticipation at the opportunities that lie before us. We must leave this world we have grown so accustomed to, with no regrets, no tears, only joy and laughter at the few awesome memories we hold fondly in our hearts like they were yesterday. You know, there are moments in life when we forget that we can die. It's in those very same moments that we know we're really living. When you're running for dear life through the woods at midnight in a foot of snow, you have no idea where you are, and you're laughing at the ridiculousness of the current situation. Are you going to stop and say you wish you hadn't done it? Or would you rather have that memory to look back on years and years later? I know what my answer is. But the freedom of our coming lives brings with it a need for order and balance. This reminds me of the story of the ant and the grasshopper. For those of you who are unfamiliar with the story, allow me to retell it for all of you to hear. In the story of the ant and the grasshopper, the ant spent all his time doing his homework, staying inside studying, and storing food for the winter, listening to Simon and Garfunkel. The grasshopper, on the other hand, spent all his time enjoying every moment to the fullest. He partied every night, went on crazy Taco Bell runs during the day, took crazy road trips with all his insect buddies, blasted music wherever he went, and listened to Sum 41 and Skrillex. He kept it real, lived on the edge, never really thinking about what he did. Well, when the winter came, the grasshopper was screwed, so he ended up mooching off the ant for food. <laughs> Sooner or later, they ran out, and they were left in the ant's small apartment, struggling to keep warm. One night, the power went out, and they were engulfed in a strange orange light. Their bodies formed a cocoon, and through a bizarre occurrence, the ant and the grasshopper were fused together, morphing into a hideous, monstrous beast. But, in the end, the new ant-grasshopper mutant turned out to be the perfect combination of knowledge and fun. He knew when there was a 
time and place for studying or partying. He picked up a taste for all kinds of music, except country. He got involved in his local and school community. He grew accustomed to a balanced diet, exercised regularly and lost weight while still gaining muscle mass. He embraced new cultures, traveled to India and Latin America, made tons of new friends, and eventually graduated college with a master's in business. Now, maybe that's not how the real story goes, but you get what I'm saying. The point is, experience life. Experience everything that it has to offer. Find balance in work and play, live dangerously, but always have a plan. Know your limits, and most importantly, keep a strong focus on what you want. Do this, and you will not be disappointed. You only get one life, so make it good. All in all, Okay, we can talk about that. All in all, the past four years of our lives as students have been very lax at times, while they've always also been ridiculously irritating, bitterly stressful, and even outrageously painful at other times. Towards the end, however, the load grew softer, the weight easier to bear. We realized that our slick movements had paid off, and our tired and withered bodies, now drenched in the sweat of relief, fell lazily onto the warm couch of summer, and out came all our greatest inhibitions and dreams for the future. As the Count of Monte Cristo once said, Life is a storm, my young friends. You will bask in the sunlight one moment, be shattered on the rocks the next. What makes you great is what you do when that storm comes. You must look into that storm and shout, Do your worst, for I will do mine. And then the fates will know you as we know you, as the conquering rulers of your domain. The triumphant conglomerate, the victorious bunch, the multitude of brilliant, valiant, brave individuals who despite all odds rose above the expected standards of your young lives, striving for an education, vanquishing any and all obstacles in your way, reaching for the stars until your hands burst into flame, pushing and pushing until at last you've made it here to this very hall and achieved the goal you've been working towards all your lives. We are Indians. We have tiger blood. We are masters of our own futures. We are titans among men. The weary few who stuck it out, and against all odds, you have almost seemed impossible. The greats, the Roy C. Catching class of 2011.